Would you? <laughs> All right. So good morning. It's Monday. <laughs> now we got some pretty crummy weather today, but um, it is supposed to continue to be nice this week. It's going to be in the 70s this week and then all of a sudden it's going to drastically drop this weekend and next week it's going to be back in the 40s and i'm mentioning this because uh, i've been wanting to plan a walking meditation at aspen grove park um, i love to do that in the fall i've done it with all my teacher training programs i used to do it through the studio and then last night i looked at the weather forecast and i was like oh my goodness if we're going to do it we have to go now so I scheduled it for Wednesday at 1, and it'll be from 1 o'clock to about 2, 15, 2, 20. Um, it'll be $15, and it's basically learning three different meditations. We're going to take the main trail through the trees with the creek. I'll teach you three different walking meditations, and these you can, you know, remember and take with you whenever you're walking from your car across the parking lot to go into the store. Or you can use it when you're doing your grocery shopping, or you can do it whenever you're, you know, out with your partner and they pissed you off and you need to calm down, you know, all these different scenarios. There's all kinds of meditations and we forget that we can actually be, you know, fully awake and actually moving at the same time that we're getting concentrated and focused. So one o'clock asking for a part behind the couch if you're interested. I'm also doing an online Zoom event at 11 o'clock on 11.11 <laughs> with Allison because this is a big portal activation time frame that we're in between November 1st and November 11th, November 11th being the peak. And um, we have a big day tomorrow. It's not only the elections, it is an eclipse. So it's a total lunar eclipse. So in the eclipse season, there's usually a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Well, tomorrow is the lunar eclipse, meaning it's going to be a full moon. And with the full moon, right, there can be emotions involved. There may not be any emotions involved. You may not have any sensitivity whatsoever. But with the eclipse, anytime we go through an eclipse, it's about highlighting in revealing things that have been unknown or unseen or hidden. So that could be within our own psyche. It could be within our own heart. It could be also in the external world, right? Seeing things about other people or truths being revealed about the bigger things happening. So I expect it to be pretty nasty this week um, because of the political charge, because of the anxiety that's just kind of hanging in the air. So it's really, really important to maintain your yoga as much as you can so that you can neutralize your emotions, so that you can diffuse any of that and transmute it into something good for yourself. You don't have to get pulled into it. So because it's an eclipse, I want to bring in both elements of the moon salutation and a sun salutation. We'll have both of those available today. I cannot be on my back for those of you watching online. So I want you to start on your back. <laughs> I'm going to say sitting because in the last class it made me start coughing and I don't want to cough. So when you come down to your back, I would like you to bend your knees today. Some of you have already done that. So how intuitive are you? <laughs> the feet can be apart, but I want you to test the waters here. Does it feel better for the knees to be apart or for the knees to stack together? And for each person, it may be a little different. See how it aids your back. But also feel your feet on the sticky mat and let your feet ground down. You don't have to put any pressure on the feet. Just allow them to ground down through touch, through feeling the texture, feeling the firmness of the floor beneath.
Rest your face. Rest your eyes. But incorporate your yogic breaths. Breathing in and out with depth and control. And I'm going to share with you a snippet regarding this eclipse. And all you have to do is breathe and listen and maybe digest it and process it to see how it may be applicable to you. This eclipse is in Taurus because the full moon is in Taurus. And Taurus is a fixed earth sun. It concerns our foundations, our sense of security, our values, the things that help us to build a meaningful life. So right now, it's noticing what we're wanting to create and how it's authentic to us. The Taurus lunar eclipse is a powerful surge of energy that will be working with the planet Uranus. Uranus is said to be the awakener. This is also working with the north node of the moon, steering us into new parts of ourselves that we've been enlivening this year. It highlights what we've been facing, what we've been healing, what we've been processing, and also what needs to change. Venus is also playing a part. And Venus is the planet of relationships and intimacy that's giving us the feeling behind the transformational energy of 2022. On top of that, Saturn is creating pressure and tension around how responsible we've been given our life choices. So as we explore this practice today, as you continue to live out your days this week, be mindful to notice the stream of consciousness that is happening within you. Notice what's being highlighted for you at this time. Now, if your feet are very wide, I want you to close that gap, not to the point where they're together, but hip distance apart. Walk the ankles so they feel as though they're stacked underneath your knees. And on your next exhalation, let your right knee spill over to the right side, rolling to the outer edge of that foot so it's like half butterfly. Good, then inhale back up. Exhale, let your left knee roll open to the left side. And inhale back up. This is the flow. Exhale, lowering the right knee. Inhale to center. <coughs> <clears throat> and keep swapping back and forth. The next time you inhale and lift both knees, exhale, let both knees fall over. And then slide the feet closer together. Now you're in reclined butterfly. We gave our hips just a tiny warm up. Now steep here. Open up space for the joints, softening the muscles. Relaxing your inner and outer thighs, hips, and buttocks. Oh. 
On your next inhale, slowly lift only your left knee. And then exhale, hug that knee in towards your chest. Now, see if it's okay to keep that right knee spun to the right. So you're still in half butterfly. If that causes discomfort or grief in any way, just relift the right knee. Otherwise, be here and receive. Helping the hips in different ways. Bringing in more flexion, some compression on the left. Opening and the external rotation on the right. One more deep breath. Good, exhale, descend your left foot. Let that knee open. Then inhale, lift your right knee. Exhale, hug that knee in towards your belly and chest. Again, checking in because there may be a lot of resistance on the left side right now. If there's resistance, if it hurts, Please lift your left knee back up. Remember this eclipse is allowing us to see how, how we have been or how we haven't been responsible with our choices. And our choices here on the mat are determined by a up, compassionate action or non-harming. Satya, being truthful and honest with ourselves and what we should or shouldn't be doing. And the integrity that backs it up. Good, gently release that right knee. Lift both knees back to center. Close your knees in towards your belly and chest, but then you're gonna separate your knees really wide apart. So you're in like tree frog pose or stirrup pose, flat on your back, holding your knees, belly chest exposed to the heavens. Relax your ankles here. This is more of the yin pose. We're not gonna be doing a yin practice, but we have done a couple yin asanas, which have been helpful in opening the hips, which in turn relates us to the element of water, which in turn relates us back to the moon, the feminine aspect. Take one last deep breath. And as you exhale, let's go ahead and gently roll over to the right side body. You can push down into your left hand. And we're going to come all the way up to stand. So when we come up to stand, you may want the block setting frame. Roll. From your heels to the balls of the feet and spread the toes nice and wide. Condition the feet down and feel the legs not only align but engage. And then bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. Place the fingers together and then reach the wrists skyward. Keep drilling down to the feet as you lift your hands. Exhale, curve to the right. We're creating Chandrasana crescent moon with strength and courage, feeling up our body cells. Inhale, when you come back up, you're going to step to the left. And sorry, Lily, you're now front row. You're going to separate your arms into Kali Goddess. So in Kali Goddess, you're rolling your thighs out, you're widening your arms to open the hips and the heart. Find something to look at with your eyes. And then as you exhale, let's bring the hands down to the floor, but have very light weight on your fingertips. 
You can be here, flat on your feet, or you can elevate your heels. I'm gonna keep my heels down today, but just know that is an option. Now, if you already know you'd like blocks, say for Kazurita Padotanasana, that standing forward fold, you can grab your blocks and have them over here next to you. Because we're now going to turn the heels back behind the toes, <laughs> slide the hands back alongside the feet, and bow the head. So we are attempting to straighten the legs out here. To evenly distribute the weight between the left and the right leg, the left and the right foot. The crown of the head is facing the floor. This is where we're wanting to receive the energy currents, the blood flow. It can be rejuvenating. And this is also said to be the dwelling place of the moon. Let's go ahead and walk the hands out in front of us. And this is where you may need fingertips or blocks. <laughs> Lengthen out from the vertebrae. And then take that right arm and sweep it out and then forward. Taking a spinal twist, noticing where you may get a little caught or trapped in that twist. Don't try to force yourself through that limitation. Just be aware of it. Exhale, lower the right hand, and now take the left arm out. And Make sure your head doesn't just flop down towards the right arm. You're lengthening through your neck, just like you're lengthening back through the tailbone. You fly that hand up, extend out long through the fingers. Make sure your breath is still rolling in and out. And then gently lower the left hand. Bring your hands up to your hips, slowly stand all the way up. Turn your right foot to face the front of the room. Lengthen your arms out, shoulder height. Press out over the right leg and windmill down to triangle pose. Your hand can rest anywhere on your body, just not the knee. You can also use a block. We're going to open up a range of motion through this top shoulder. So we're going to clockwork the arm. Sail that left arm overhead and then slowly look at your hand as you lower it down towards the right foot, sweep it back towards or past the right hip and back up to the top. Take it back over the base. Spiral that arm down towards the floor, no intention to touch. And then lengthen it back overhead. Do one more. Be slow and mindful through this and also feel the twist. Pull it at the top, affirm the energy and joy of flowing down to me. Now you're going to lunge the right knee just a bit. It's okay to find those blocks if you need them. You're going to spin off the back heel and come into a lunge. Perfect. I was going to say you're going to need that chair. You already have it. Perfect. You're going to be able to teach chair yoga after this experience. <laughs> Once you're here in this low lunge, we're going to inhale, lift the head. And it's okay if that back thigh kind of dips a little bit. And on the exhale, you're going to pull it through the navel and round out by cat stretch. All right. Inhale. Like how, right? It's not going to be as major in that movement, a little bit more minor. And exhale, round it out. Power of three, inhale, little cow tilt with the spine. Exhale with the cat stretch in the spine. And then re lunge that knee, look out with your eyes. Good from here. Turn and plant your back foot. When you turn and plant the back foot, 
your right arm is going to come to the inside of that right shin. And you can just rest your right hand on the chair, Trish. Okay. And the left arm is going to reach up. So it's very similar to side angle. But in hot yoga, they actually call this triangle. On your next in breath, use that left hand to come all the way up to stand. And now turn your right foot so it's facing the same direction as your left. Good. Now lift your arms up. Pose of Da Vinci. Pose of exhilaration. Now I want you to turn your feet slightly so they're facing more to the outside or towards the corners of the mat. And Lily, if you need to look towards me, that's fine. We're going to take the arms off to the right and Trish, be super cautious with your left knee. We're going to skate the hands down and across the mat over to the left and inhale up to the top. Then we're going to do this a couple more times. And Trish, if you need to just keep your legs straight and just circle the arms, that's okay too. And then come back to Divinci. Relax the arms down shoulder height. Turn your right foot in and your left foot all the way towards the back of your mat. Good. Now lengthen out over the left leg. Take it down to your triangle. Our way of doing triangle. And then we'll pop work the arm. Right arm reaches over across the ear. Circle it down to the inside of the left foot. Revolve it back past the right hip and all the way back to the top. And then continue. Go at a slow, mindful pace. Half the circle you're inhaling, half the circle you're exhaling. And we're doing three of those. Good. When you're ready, look down at that left knee. And uh, Trish, you can turn back to face the front and just swap with your footing. We're going to spin off the back heel. We're coming into that low lunge. And this is where we'll do the cat cows again. Yes, feel free to bring those blocks around with you. Inhale, lifting into cow. Hand and heart lifts. Exhale into cat stretch back. Belly pulls in, heart withdraws. And twice more. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Now turn and plant your back foot to the floor. Bring the left arm to the inside of the left shin. Reach that right arm overhead. This is where you're going to feel the strength in your lower body or be building the strength in your lower body. And then inhale, slowly come up, pressurizing the left foot. And then relax your arms. Turn your left foot in to join your right. Lift the arms up, that sign of dimension. Turn your toes out again. But this time we're going to circle the opposite way. So bring the arms over to the left as you lunge the left knee. Skate over to the right and circle it overhead. And do it twice. Coming back to Da Vinci. Turning your toes forward towards the side edge of your back. Bringing the hands down to the hips. Your shoulders are going to roll back. And then as you exhale, you're going to fold. It's a different variation. It's the B variation. With the elbows up and the shoulders back, the chest has no option but to stay at least wide. Slow, smooth breaths. Affirming here, I now release and relax away from all mental barriers or burdens. 
Inhale, press the feet down. Leave at the back of your heart to come up to seat. Turn your heels back in. Come back to college. And then drape your arms down, straighten out through your legs, and step up to the front. And that was half of a move out. Reach the arms up overhead, lace your finger, roll the wrist up. And then, Susan, you were tucking a little bit, so five on the back, thighs back. That's it. Yeah. Good. Exhale, curve left. <laughs> Grounding your feet, sweeping up and over with strength and courage, feeling up our body set. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, step to the right. Now, see if you can sit in the front. Lily's <laughs> like, thank you. <laughs> Kali goes. Exhale, fold. I lifted my heels in the blissful flow. I don't feel like getting gentle, but if you want that, go for it. There you go. Susan's going to be in the lead there. You can use her as an example. Notice when you elevate your heels, though, you may put too much weight in your hands. Try to let your hands just be there for balance. Good. Then spin your heels back behind your toes, straighten out through your leg bones. This time, <coughs> clip your Peace moves around each big toe, a different variation of Prasarika Padottanasana, and bow forward. Now release all mental burdens and barriers. So yesterday, his little personal story, but the affirmation applies to this. I have a huge family. You know, I have three sisters. They're all married. They all have kids. And uh, and now the nephews have girlfriends or wives. And anyway, the family just keeps growing and growing. And we were going to finally draw names for the first time. Every year we buy for everyone. And I've always been a single parent with one income. That's not very much. And it's always been a struggle for me. And one sister came along and said, you know what? I think we should draw names. And I was completely in alignment with that and celebrating that until the other two sisters decided, no, we're not doing that. Oh, okay, walk the hands out. So obviously yesterday I got a little emotionally upset, like great, you know? Inhale, reach the right arm out and up. And so I was talking to Rob about it, and he was like, you know what? Just do what you can do. Don't worry about it. And then another sister came back and said, we've just decided we're still shopping for everyone. And I'm like, you know what? That's okay. If they want to do that, then let them do that. But I can't do that this year. Exhale, lower the right hand down. So I had to let go of that mental burden. I was putting it on myself. <clears throat> Take it to the other side, left arm reaching up. So think about that affirmation. I release the mental burdens and barriers. What is that for you? Exhale, bring that hand down. And then reach the arms to your side to come all the way up. Five point star. With five point star, you're gonna turn your left foot towards the front of the mat. You're gonna launch out over that side, windmill down to your triangle pose. This time in triangle pose, you're gonna turn that top hand and loop it behind your back. Just thread it there. Now keep your right arm behind your back even though we lift the left arm and reach it up towards the sky above, keeping both legs straight. 
And then as you exhale, lunge that left knee, release the back hand, and roll off your back heel. All right, from here, plant your right palm, take the revolving twist, with the belly spinning towards that front thigh, and you're attempting to stack your shoulders. Good, exhale, lower the left hand, turn and plant to the back foot, safely come up, turn the left foot to face the front door again, turn your heels in, create your Kaligatis. You can be right here or you can fold down and have your fingertips help you to balance into this wider variation of squat. The heels can be down, the heels can be up, you get to choose. Now turn your heels back behind your toes, straighten out through your legs, straighten out through your back, and then bring your hands to your waist, slowly come all the way up. Take it to five point star. Good, right foot's gonna rotate around to the back. Lengthen out over that leg windmill down to triangle pose. Flip that top hand, thread it across the sacrum. Keep that left arm behind the back and inhale, lift the right arm up. Gaze past that right hand if it's okay for your neck. If it's not, then find another comfortable position. That way it's not forced. Good, exhale, we're gonna slowly lunge that right knee. We're gonna bring the hands down, spin off the back heel, plant the left palm, reach the right arm skyward. So the moon salutation is what takes us in all these different directions on our mat. Like I said, we're doing more of a half than a whole today. Exhale, lower the right hand down, turn and plant the back foot. Safely float the hands up. Turn your right foot when you do. Turn your heels in, take that last Kali Goddess. This will close out our moon south. So you can slowly turn the left foot and step up to the front of the mat. Hands to prayer position. Close your eyes. Salutations to the moon, to the awakening light within, to the dawning of a higher state of consciousness in all beings. Open the eyes. Inhale, let your arms circle up. Exhale, hands come together and you're going to fold straight through the middle. Uttanasana. Inhale, slide your hands up towards your shins. Lengthen out halfway. Exhale, pour back over and down. Moving into the sun out element. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands come down the midline. Continue to flow into Uttanasana. Inhale, arm at Uttanasana. Exhale, return back down. We're going to do one more of these. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, through the middle. In and halfway up. Out and release. So now, inhale, we're taking plank. Stepping the feet back. Good. Exhale, shift forward, lower down to your chaturanga. Inhale to the up dog. Exhale, curl the toes under. Rock and roll back to downward facing dog. We're doing that twice more. Inhale, roll forward, plank. Exhale, remember you can modify lowering to your knees. Inhale to up dog. Exhale into down dog. 
We're going to do one more of those. Inhale, plank. Exhale, that low push up, knees up or down is fine. Inhale, balloon them up. And exhale, drop and roll back. Three deep breaths here. And then inhale, travel the feet forward to the top of the mat. Holding in. <clears throat> and you're right. And then closing it out. Inhale, arms reach. And exhale, hands return to the heart. And close your eyes. Citations to the sun. To the awakening light within the sun. To the dawn of a much higher state of consciousness and all beings. All right. We're going to need <clears throat> one of our blocks and we're going to come down to the floor. So I don't think you'll need your chair once you're down. Oh, how are, can you be on your knees now? No, no, no. Okay. just try. let me know whenever you can be. Okay. Whenever it starts being comfortable, have a block. This is what we're gonna do first. I'll let you see first. We're gonna do the mini cat cows or the pelvic rolls. And then eventually we're gonna come up into what you already know, supported bridge. So have a block in hand three. Be aligned under your knees. And then I need to go come back. <laughs> I don't want to start coughing. All right, when you're ready, you're going to roll the pelvis forward. And then you're going to roll it back in. Tilting it forward. And then tilting it back. Little pelvic tilts forward on the inhale. And then that top being on the exhale. Do three more. When you're ready, press your eyes with feet, inhaling, charge into your hamstrings and glutes. Lift your buttocks off the floor. Slide that block under that sacrum. And then just sink and rest upon it. So ponder for a moment. Have you created a meaningful, authentic life? Maybe you're questioning and processing that as we speak. The eclipse energy usually catapults some sort of change. And the change doesn't necessarily have to be for the worst, it could be for the better. Are you sensing any pressure around creating change? 
And is that pressure self-imposed? <clears throat> Do you feel like it's stemming from the universe giving you a push? We're going to join Donna. She already felt the need to lift the feet, and we're going there too. So go ahead and lift your feet in the air. It's okay to activate your feet, to point and flex, or rotate, or just be. Right? You don't even have to do anything, but maybe you feel compelled to do something. Go with that. Good for blood flow and pumping the feet in that way is really nice for helping to drain the lymphatic tissues, in the lower half of the body. This is going to be our final inversion today. However, I'm going to give you a choice for Shavasana. Let's go ahead and descend the feet to the floor. Open the knees apart, bring the soles of the feet together, test that recline butterfly now with your hips elevated. If it doesn't feel good to your body, you don't have to do it, you can leave it out. I'm saying this because 80% of the time I love this pose, 20% of the time, not so much. And hence, a non harm, compassionate action, stops and honesty, truthfulness, and integrity. Bringing those in play. All right, let's inhale, lift the knees, flatten the feet, push down through the feet to lift the tailbone up. Once you contract your glutes, Slide the block away, roll down one vertebra at a time. Now hug your knees in. Take your hands to the tops of the knees and then start to circle them around, around the same direction. Three to five times before taking it in the opposite direction. Now roll to your left lunar side and then come up. Our final pose today is going to be restored. And this is going to be not only a restorative pose, but something that you're going to continue with your boss. And remember earlier, I was like, well, this is the last inversion. Well, maybe not. Because of Shavasana. Because of this, we're creating a slide. Some of you may enjoy this. But some of you may need another inversion call the mind right so think about where you're at emotionally mentally i have a good friend who is extremely uh you know well you know her too allison she's a psychic she's a medium she's super sensitive and yesterday she about had a breakdown just because she was feeling overwhelmed she was feeling like couldn't get anything done. There was all this pressure. She didn't prepare for the week. And really, what it was, she was feeling when she figured out really what the root cause of it was, it was the anxiety in the mass consciousness. So, we all are perceptive, we all are intuitive. 
and psychic to a degree. So I wanted to share that with you in case you've been feeling anxious. It's in the air. And so something you can do that I want you to do right now, and I want you to say it out loud, I release any fear or anxiety away from my body. Okay, let's all say it. I release any fear or anxiety out of my body. I release everyone else's energy out of my body. Say it loud. I release everyone's energy out of my body. And then I want you to say this out loud. I recall all my scattered pieces back home to me now. I recall all of my scattered pieces home to me now. And then I want you to say out loud, I am, and say your name. I am Rodney. And then I want you to say, I love my body. I love my body. I am rooted in love and light. I am rooted in love and light. Now, take a deep breath in. Slow breath out. Feel the need to swallow, swallow. Relax the muscles of your face. Relax all the sensory organs. But gaze in and up into your mind's eye. And as you're gazing into the mind's eye, I want you to pick your favorite. We've all seen how beautiful it is to see the sunbeams coming and piercing through the clouds. We have all seen the beautiful moonbeams that can come down at night. Pick your favorite, the sun or the moon, and allow a sunbeam or a moonbeam to come down through your brow. And imagine it's filling up the mind, illuminating the mind, illuminating your inner awareness, heightening your state of consciousness, and bringing a beautiful glow to your face. And then allow the light to stream down through the spine and allow it to branch off and to shine through each limb. Allow it to penetrate, it to illuminate your heart, your soul. Remembering if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light.
nonsense that may have come up to the surface but hold on to any insights or revelations you might have received. And just casually begin to work your way out of this position towards a comfortable seat. Sitting upright, the eyes closed. Remembering the way we started our Shavasana, imagining the sun or the moonbeam coming down to the ground, feeling this up. Even though it may be cloudy and dreary today, I want you to remember how infused you are with light. That you can be, shine, and share your light. Bringing the hands to prayer position at your heart. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Thank you so much. Especially it's such an important day, it's such an important week, such an important year. <laughs> What's that? Well, this music's awesome, isn't it? It's, it's um, it is so it's, well jewels of silence jewels of silence. jewels of silence and it has a swan on the cover jewels of silence it's not on spotify uh, it should be because i doubt i mean i well i guess i went to apple music and now i have my phone but yeah it should be on Jewels of silence. Yes. yes. Yeah. yes. Exactly. You're welcome to it's take a picture of it. Play on uh, the page for Apple Music. Apple Music. Yeah. 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 Yeah.